Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, Lewiston Porter Primary Education Center. Um, and uh, I'm sorry that it has to be in a Zoom box today, but I want you to know we have um, so much information uh, to give you today. And we will be together for approximately an hour and 15 minutes. And then there'll be time for uh, questions and answers at the end. But I really just wanna welcome everybody here. Um, it's, this is a very special time for your family as you begin to transition your children into full day school. Uh, my name again is Mrs. Larson. I am the principal here at the Primary Education Center. I've been with Lewiston Porter now. I'm ending my 15th year as an elementary principal. Um, I look forward to meeting your families and getting to know you more. Um, today is really that first step of the journey into kindergarten. And we are going to be reviewing um, uh, several other transition uh, meetings that you will be invited to uh, with your child so that they are acclimated to our school and, and ready when that bus pulls up that second week of September. So with that, um, I'd like to uh, just go over a few uh, Zoom etiquette guidelines. Uh, so let me just get to that. For a minute. Whoops. Here we go. One second as I let a few more people in. Okay. Here's our Zoom etiquette. And I just wanna review this with you so we have a positive experience today. Uh, there are just a few guidelines. Uh, most of you are already following these guidelines. We've all become uh, experts in uh, Zoom etiquette this year. Uh, the first one is to please keep your microphone muted unless you are speaking and you are welcome to come off mic at any point during the, during the presentation as a question may come up for you. Um, we also ask that if you have a question, please put it in the chat. We will check that on a regular basis throughout the presentation. Um, but we also want to welcome you if you'd rather speak um, to just come off mic and, um, and uh, to please ask your question just as if we were in a room together. Um, if you are using a video, I see some little ones out there today. Hello to my friends. Um, if you are using a video, please be aware of your surroundings because they will be visible to all in the Zoom room. Um, this meeting is being recorded for future use uh, for families that were not able to make it today. So if you do not wish to be recorded, please let us know now. Okay. So I'd like to just go back to um, the front page here. And this is really our new mission statement at Lewiston Porter. We have a five year uh, district-wide strategic plan. And this strategic plan started this September. Uh, it was a, a challenging year to start a new district strategic plan, but we did move forward on many areas in this plan already are in motion. Uh, with this new plan, uh, we came up with a new mission statement. And I'd like to just tell you what that is, because I think it really speaks volume to uh, the, all of the staff members in our school district. Tamara, we yes. can't see um, the mission statement. We see your uh, apps on your uh, screen. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
you're seeing, um, let me stop the share and start over. Okay, screen share. Can you see it now? Okay, great. Uh, so that mission statement is we really have unified K through 12. In the past, we had a different mission statement for each level of development. And we have really unified our purpose uh, as one purpose. Um, but we do believe that each child, as they begin the journey, whether that was in pre-K here with us or now in kindergarten, that your child's individual pathway will be developed and it will be honored. And it is our promise to give your child our personal best. That is every staff member will give you their personal best on this journey at Lewiston Porter. Because really our purpose is to make sure that every child's assets are used so that they grow their confidence, so they are ready to contribute to our world beyond Lewiston Porter. And so today, I want to go over the agenda with you. Are you able to view the agenda now? Okay, great. Our agenda today uh, for this next hour that we spend together is uh, really to help parents become acclimated. I do see little ones out there and there are going to be some uh, fun videos that we're going to show right away for both the parents and the little ones that are on. But most of this information is really to uh, prepare parents today for the kindergarten journey and what's to come. Um, so we are you're going to get to meet the teachers um, through a video that they created the kindergarten team created for you. you we are planning for six classrooms next year in kindergarten based on current registration numbers. And you're also going to get to see um, a shortened version of some kindergarten graduates. Uh, we call them our kindergarten ambassadors, and they were recently in kindergarten, uh, now in first grade, and uh, you are going to get to hear about their kindergarten experience as through the lens of a graduate. Um, after that, Mrs. Allender, if she could just come off mic and say hello. Hi, everybody. I'm glad you're here. Mrs. Allender is one of those teachers you're going to meet in the video, but you're also going to uh, get to uh, uh, know her a little better today as she is our kindergarten peer coordinator. And that means that she is a, the team leader of our kindergarten teachers and she supports the coordination of all the curriculum and all the events and uh, on the journey of kindergarten. So she will be talking to you today about the curriculum we currently use. And um, we will then show you a video of a, a snapshot into the year in kindergarten, okay? After that, you're going to get to meet some other very important people who are either here now or will be on the Zoom shortly. Uh, you'll get to meet our nurse, Mrs. Leggett. You'll get to meet our social worker, Mrs. Myers. And we also have our transportation uh, pickup patrol coordinators, and that is Mrs. Bach and Mrs. Whitson Zellner. Uh, we also have a PTSA representative who will be here with us today. And then after that, we'll review uh, some kinder kindergarten supplies, uh, some of the questions you sent in to us. But please do put those uh, questions in the chat if you have any that come up throughout the presentation. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I want to show you is that kindergarten um, in that or the teacher video. I want you to meet the teachers. So let's go there first. All right, is everybody, can you view the video? All right, I'm gonna play it and I'm gonna turn it up as high as it goes on my computer. Please turn up your volume controls as high as they go um, so that you can hear the video well. Welcome, all of you who are here to my report today. 
future kindergartners in your families. This is Mrs. Majerski. I just want to send out a very warm welcome to you. And I want to let you know, I'm so excited to see all you brand new kindergartners come the fall, however that may be. I can't wait to teach you and see you. We do a lot of fun and exciting things in kindergarten and you're really going to love it. Hi, boys and girls. My name is I teach kindergarten here at TEC. I do not want to meet you in September. Don't forget, all you kids coming, and I am ready to rock and roll. I hope you will be too. I'll see you soon. Hello, my friends. I am Mrs. Fernandez. I am a kindergarten teacher at TEC, and I am looking very forward to meeting all of you. Remember to always choose not to Hi, my name is Daniela Thomas. I teach kindergarten. Welcome to our kindergarten family. Can't wait to see you in the fall. Bye bye. Hi, boys and girls. I'm Mrs. Kinnard. I'm going to be one of the teachers working in kindergarten this year. I hope you have a wonderful summer and I can't wait to see you in the fall. Bye. Okay, so there you have it, uh, my friends. Uh, and just a second. And just a second, I'm having a couple technical difficulties. All right, there we go. And the next thing that I'd like to show you is um, a video that was created by those student ambassadors. Um, who are going to give a little peek into, again, their view of the kindergarten world after experiencing it for one full year. So if you do have little ones with you, this is a fun one to watch, but we'll also be, uh, we also already sent you the QR code where you can watch it with your child again. So I'll show you that in just a bit. Welcome to kindergarten. My name is Riot and I'm six years old. I'm going to tell you a little bit about us. Kindergarten makes me happy. I got three teachers. They make me feel happy and they greet me off the bus every day. <laughs>
Today, I have to talk about writing. Here are some important things to remember about writing. One, capital letters. Two, use finger spaces. Three, don't forget your punctuation. Okay. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, I do want to mention that we are uh, what you call leader in me school. Um, our school district as part of that district strategic plan has um, entered into a partnership with the Covey Institute. And part of that partnership involves training and uh, we teach the children uh, the Covey seven habits that are also used in the business world. We teach it at their level and uh, they sing about the habits and uh, they learn them, uh, they journal about them. And we have many assemblies that incorporate the habits. We also celebrate student leaders almost every day on our morning news program. Um, and I bring this up now in the presentation because uh, the reason we have student ambassadors a part of our kindergarten orientation today is we truly believe that every child can be a leader. And uh, that is the philosophy that we have developed at the primary school. And then that, that is supported all the way through their journey at Lewiston Porter. Um, so we are happy to have children a part of the orientation. Um, again, uh, sometimes it's live and in person, but they did a terrific job on those videos. Uh, so I'd like to just bring your attention to how you can watch the longer version of that video because they have a lot more to say than what you heard today. Um, I did send you, we sent you this letter and in the letter, uh, the second page that got you here today, uh, there were QR codes. This is what a QR code looks like. And if uh, there are directions right at the bottom here on how to, if you don't already have a QR code reader from the app store on your phone or on a tablet, um, it is a free uh, app that you can download. And then you can watch these videos, meet the teachers, uh, welcome to kindergarten from the student ambassadors. Um, and there's one more video we're gonna show you today that's more comprehensive about the entire program. You can watch those videos uh, with your child in the summer uh, as they're preparing for school to again, help them feel more comfortable as they transition to full day kindergarten. Um, so if you have any questions about that, or if you're not sure where that is, you can certainly call us and we can send you another one. Um, the videos are also uh, posted on our website but we'd be happy to help you. Okay, I'm gonna pause just to see if there are any uh, questions based on uh, what you've seen so far. Let me look in the chat. Okay, I don't see anything there yet. The next thing I wanna draw your attention to because this is a place where you can get so much information. Um, we have many 12 month employees who will be here in the summer to help you. Um, I am one of them, our main office clerical staff is one, but you can also go right to our website. And on our website, if you go to Primary Education Center, all the schools are listed at the top, and you scroll down, you'll see a tweet, 
uh, like us on Twitter if you're on Twitter. Uh, we do uh, have a tweet of the week that I look for, and uh, your child may be uh, featured in a tweet of the week next year. So take a look at that and like us on Twitter. Uh, that'll always be there live. But then as you scroll down, you'll see lots of information. You'll see updated supply lists. Uh, you'll see uh, our virtual kindergarten orientation, our new virtual kindergarten orientation will be there uh, soon because it's being recorded today. Uh, you also, if you scroll down, you'll see something called the family handbook. This is very important that you know where this is because it is now a live document. And if you click on it, uh, this is our current handbook. And you can see the last revision was April 20th which was just uh, a short month and a half ago. And we have been updating this handbook all year based on uh, the pandemic and the guidelines that we need to follow as a school district. And so uh, this year our handbook had to be live. We did not print it because there were, there were guidelines that changed throughout the year. So we brought students back to five days of full instruction out of a hybrid model on April 26th. So as a result of that, there were some guidelines that were changed. So this live version enables you to go in and check it out at any time uh, to see what the current health guidelines are. And then there's also other things that will not change much in terms of like our attendance procedure, um, some different kindergarten um, uh, you know, materials, are you ready for kindergarten, how to get ready with your child this summer. So there are some things on there that won't change, but the health guidelines definitely have. You can also find the last section on the handbook. Uh, I talked about the seven habits briefly, and uh, they are listed there for you. So if you wanted to use some of this vocabulary with your children, it tells you a little bit more about um, how to teach them the seven habits uh, at a primary level. And we always encourage parents to partner with us um, so that children are hearing uh, similar vocabulary and messages at home as they are in school. Any questions about our website or where you can find some of these resources for you? Okay, then I am gonna ask that Mrs. Allender, our kindergarten team leader, uh, talks to you a little bit about the curriculum we currently use for our kindergartners um, based on the next generation uh, learning standards in New York State. Hi again, everybody. I'm Darcy Allender. Um, as Tamara said, um, I am a kindergarten teacher, but also I am the team leader for kindergarten, meaning that I, I, uh, they call it a peer coordinator or department chair. Um, but I wanted to talk to you today about the structure of our learning day, and then and I'll take any questions. Um, and I'm going to try to be clearer than yesterday, but um, it is the next generation standards. Um, we have moved away from Common Core. They are all listed if anybody is an overachiever and really wants to see uh, what's going on in kindergarten, what we have to teach is on the state ed um, department website and you can find it all there. Um, so the district has employed the Lucy Calkins, um workshop model for ELA, um, English language arts. So we do that for both reading and for writing. So reading and writing are both taught um, using the model of a workshop. So what that looks like is this. So for um, reading, it would look like a small mini lesson, about 10 minutes to a whole group of children, just on one quick teaching point. So for example, maybe um, beginning of the year we're studying character. So we would give a quick mini lesson on character. The kids would then go back to their um, individual seats and they would read for a given amount of time uh, from self-selected reading text. So all of our classroom, libra classroom libraries are full of leveled text at um, various 
uh, reading levels based on URLA, which is um, the American Reading Company, which we kind of integrate into Lucy Calkins program. Um, you'll learn more about that at um, your child's open house night, but I just want to give you a quick overview without getting into too, too much detail. Um, so they're going to go back to their seats. They're going to be reading from texts that are at just their independent reading level, which is 95 to 100% decodable for them and 95 to 100% comprehension. We do some assessment right in the beginning of the year to kind of develop those levels, figure out where the kids are. And as the children are reading, the teacher's pulling children over to conference. So they're reading to us. And then maybe your child isn't really ready for character, or already knows character. That's where we would be able to differentiate their instruction during those small conference times. Um, in addition to that, then not this year because of COVID regulations, but typically what would happen next is your child would read with their reading partner for a given amount of time. So the given amount of time that I'm speaking of is fluid. Uh, the beginning of the year starts off five to maybe seven minutes. And at this point in the school year, the kids are uh, reading about 20 to 25 minutes by themselves um, independently at school. So then what happens is, um, perhaps I pulled somebody over and during the workshop for reading, um, somebody that I'm speaking to really hones in on that character that I was talking about back to circling back to the mini lesson. And I might just, you know, readers stop. I have to show you what, um, Charlie and I just talked about. He found a character in his book, Charlie, tell your friends real quick. So we just do these celebrations to kind of bring them back to that teaching point. And then we, it's quick. It's, it's, it's 10 seconds and then we move on. So um, then aside from that, the writing conference, or excuse me, the writing workshop works similar to that, same um, basic structure to it. It starts with a 10 minute mini lesson. The kids go off and write, and then the kids come up to the teacher and they do um, conferences. During the conference, that's when we meet their individual their needs in terms of writing at that point. We do a quick celebration for kids who are on teaching point and then um, they share. They um, share, And then after sharing, they go back to that partner um, activity again, which again, this year had to kind of change due to COVID. But what they would do then is read to their partner and we kind of develop um, their ability to conference with each other. So it's really quite different than um, what was traditional, at least when I was in school, the teacher taught, you did a worksheet, you turned it back in, that was it. Um, aside, in addition to the reading work, writing workshops, we do do some skill groups, some small group instruction, reading groups per se, um, for re reading in ELA. Our math is based on the modules still. However, it is not um, using the modules exactly. What I mean by that is we adopted something called Kinder Math and Kinder Math is aligned exactly to the modules. It's just a little bit friendlier setup and a little bit um, more visually pleasing per se. You'll be getting lots and lots of um, parent letters telling you what's going to be going on that unit. And so you can kind of use the same vocabulary. A lot of what we do in kindergarten obviously is front load those um, vocabulary words in all the subject areas for kindergarten. Uh, let's see. Um, next year, we are going to be piloting to a couple different math programs, just so you're aware. Um, so there, you're, you may not be doing exactly kinder math, but it will be something obviously aligned to the modules as well in the um, next generation learning standards. Um, aside from that, we, you know, we do, we do a lot of fun activities and hopefully next year you'll be able to come to our Thanksgiving celebrations and our Christmas care, um, chorus concert that we had a couple of years ago and lots of field trips. We're really hoping that it looks a little bit more typical next year than it did this year. But, um, you know, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer those for you at this point if it's about curriculum and instruction. Darcy, could you also yeah. just talk for a, a minute about our communication through Seesaw? Sure. Okay, so Seesaw. Um, if, you're, if you have a child in the district, you already know what a godsend Seesaw has been for us. Um, 
and I uh, have to, you know, self, I'll be fully transparent. I uh, struggle a little bit with technology in terms of its use. Um, I feel like there needs to be a, a really great balance for everything. So when I say I love something, it's, it's it truly, I'm, I'm speaking from the heart. Seesaw is the best thing ever. It is the most wonderful tool for parents and teachers so that parents know exactly what is happening in your child's classroom. We can take pictures, we take video, um, and we can just send it to you throughout the day. You'll get a little ding on your phone. It's an app for you to download with a QR code and that you'll be getting the first week or two of school and hope, well, hopefully even at your meet and greet, which we'll talk about later. Um, sometimes they're ready at that point as well. And you might get a little ding and all of a sudden you'll just be able to see your child reading to the, to their friend or see your, you know, a picture of us running around outside in the playground. It could be, you know, it, it's just, it really is a wonderful wonderful, wonderful, non-invasive way for you to see what's going on in your child's class occasionally throughout the um, week or the month. Um, we try not to overdo it. We get it. You're busy too. Um, but it is nice. It's a good little peek see. But in addition to that, it's a wonderful tool for communication. You can email us right through Seesaw. Um, we can send um, pictures of, we send, well, I can speak for myself and I know several of my friends that are teaching kindergarten as well. We take pictures of notices that go home. So all that paperwork you can't find, it's in your Seesaw folders. And we're going to show you how to do Seesaw. It's super, super easy. The kids do it. Um, for in, in addition to a communication tool, it's also a learning tool. The kids can work on act activities that the teachers can assign to them um, using Seesaw. It literally was a lifeline um, last spring when we shut down um, Zoom and Seesaw is you know, that's what we had, that, that, that's all we had to, had to do. We didn't get, we didn't see them anymore. So we were able to make assignments um, that we can assign to the kids every day. Um, and it's the work, which is kind of, kind of cool. Um, it goes with your, your child has like um, a virtual portfolio per se, and it just travels with them. My kids this year will have their same portfolio to go to first grade, second grade, third grade, until the next best thing you know happens that, that comes along other than seesaw, but I can't imagine. It has just been a, a tremendous um, communication tool between home and school. You almost don't need paper anymore, although I am a paper person. Uh, but it's still, I mean, it, it you, you have everything you need is right on seesaw. So that's that's seesaw. I, did I see a question come up in the chat? I thought I saw something pop up. I'm not sure. I didn't, couldn't read it, but. Okay, uh, it says, where can I find out about these things you're talking about? I've never heard of any of it, modules and such. Okay, so um, again, you can find, uh, well, the, the reading program that I, and writing program that I'm speaking to is Lucy Calkins. Um, she has a website. I don't use it often. So I don't, I, I assume if you just Googled Lucy Calkins, um, reading and writing program, you would find that they're two individual programs they are separate from each other. There's a, there's the Lucy Cuckins reading, and then there's the Lucy Cuckins writing. So you could Google it. And I'm sure there's just a plethora of information about that. Um, the modules and the, the actual standards that we have to teach to um, are on the New York State Education Department, nyseded.org org, I believe it's .org. If it's not, it's .com. And you can go by grade level. So you're going to find the standards by grade level. You'll hit kindergarten. And it, it is admittedly a bit of a cluster um, on the state ed department's website. You kind of have to search around a little bit, um, but it all definitely is there. Um, if you are interested, I don't know, Tamara, did the did this group of um, parents in the mailing get the overview of the writing and work writing and reading workshop things? Not, or no, they did not get not that. Yet. Not yet. Okay. Yet. They will okay. get that. But I put uh, in the chat for you how to spell okay. Lucy Calkins reading and writing workshop. Mm -hmm. And then uh, NYSED stands for New York State Education Department. Mm -hmm. If you put in nyseed.com, 
Uh, you can also uh, put in the search box math modules and it will take you to each grade level right, uh, right on that website. Correct. We are, however, as Mrs. Allender said, uh, you're welcome. We are uh, in the process uh, of, of piloting new math programs. Uh, we've been in uh, that math program for quite some time now. And uh, we are looking at our next generation math standards that really just were adopted uh, in the last year. And we're looking at new programs. We've picked our pilots and uh, two of our kindergarten teachers will be piloting a new math uh, program next year. It will not be for the whole year, but they will pilot a few units um, so that we can make a good decision moving forward. Uh, for there's, our primary there's just interject camera really fast. This, the, um, there are going to be new, there is an addition, there's a change to the state um, math standards, but for kindergarten, I believe the only change is um, they're adding, um, and forgive me, I believe they're going to have to do money, penny, nickel, dime. But other than that, it yes. really is the exact same for kindergarten, thankfully. Um, so for those of you who had a kindergartner previously, it, it is not going to look different other than that. And science is changing next year as well. It's going to be the next generation science. And we're using yes. a program called Amplify. Um, I believe that's the name of it. Um, yes. So Ampl that Amplify is extremely hands-on. Uh, it is uh, an inquiry-based approach to learning science. So it's posing questions to children. It's uh, creating engineering skills in children. Uh, it's really an exciting program. We cannot wait to launch it. We always pilot for a full year before we choose a program. Uh, and a pilot means that at, le uh, at least two teachers a grade level pilot. Uh, different programs, and we have criteria we use to vet every program locally, and then we make a decision. Um, again, that's the resource. The standards are, you know, uh, the destination, and then the resources we purchase are really uh, the, the guide to that de uh, destination. And uh, so we're always looking for updated resources and the best practices for our children. We actually have a what's called a curriculum review cycle. So every few years we're reviewing our resources and making decisions. So great questions. Um, I do wanna turn now um, to, I have a representative from the PTSA here and uh, uh, based on her schedule, I just wanna turn to her. Uh, Virginia McAuliffe is here. She is the president of our PTSA and uh, she's gonna talk to you a little bit about the PTSA. There she is. Um, and uh, how you might get involved and why it's important to be a member of your PTSA. Great, thank you, Tamara. Can, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Thumbs up. Awesome, great. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Tamara, for allowing me to, to be here with everyone today. Uh, my name is Virginia McAuliffe and I'm representing uh, the district-wide uh, PTSA. Uh, the reason I mentioned that is within the last few years, uh, we actually merged all of the PTAs across the district. Uh, we we uh, formerly had um, a PTA for the PEC and the IEC, and then had independent PTAs for the middle and the high school. Uh, so now we have one big, wonderful PTSA uh, representing the entire district. Uh, so we're very, we're very pleased with that. It's been going extremely well. Um, so what do we do? Uh, of course, we fundraise. <laughs> um, that's a big part of what we do. Um, so throughout the year and, you know, knock on wood, um, everybody is hopeful that things kind of go back to normal uh, for next year or, or something of that nature. Uh, so we have uh, programming that we consistently run, um, such as school stores um, in the buildings. Um, it's a lot of fun for the kids. They love that. Uh, we have book fairs um, with Scholastic, um, and that results in uh, Scholastic dollars um, that we give right back uh, to the students and the teachers to utilize those. Uh, we have spirit wear sales. Uh, so uh, with kindergartners entering the district, especially those new families, um, if you're looking to get some, um, some nice Louport gear, uh, we have online sales throughout the year. 
uh, and also hopefully uh, cash and carry if we get back to more in-person events uh, during the year, you know, keep a lookout. You can grab some some sweet uh, Blueport gear to keep your, keep your stock fresh. Um, let's see, uh, at the end of the year, uh, field day, um, graduating ceremonies for each respective building. I know Tamara right now we're looking at the butterfly uh, ceremony for the graduates of the PEC, which uh, as a PTSA, we're very um, happy that we can help uh, support that. Uh, so there's really kind of lots of, um, lots of uh, things that we do throughout the year, uh, which leads me to my next point uh, is that we're always looking for volunteers. Uh, we have our board that is set uh, for the upcoming school year, our board of directors and our committee chairs, uh, but we're always looking for volunteers. And, you know, it really doesn't matter what your availability is like, believe me, we will find an opportunity uh, for you to come and help. Um, I work full time, my husband's full time, got two kids at Lewport, um, and uh, we really do appreciate the support in any, any way that you can give it. Uh, so if you are interested at any time, um, if you go back to the Lewport website, you can just search for Lewiston Porter PTSA. Uh, all of the, um, the board is listed there. My contact information is there. It is a little out of date. Um, that is our, our current board for this coming year. Uh, I'm sorry, for the current year, we're going to be updating it for next year, but I'm still president for next year as well. So feel free to give me a shout. Um, if you want to say, hey, Virginia, I want to get involved. What do I do? I don't know where to start. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to find something for you. Um, I got to tell you, I, I blinked and I have a middle schooler and my oldest is, is going to, to high school next year. Uh, so one of the best things that I did from the onset was get involved with the PTSA um, and I haven't looked back. So it's really rewarding uh, work, it's fulfilling. Um, and, and at the end of the day, we're giving back to our kids, uh, the teachers, Tamara, all the administrators in the district just make everything so easy to do honestly, uh, that it's just, um, it's really rewarding. And uh, so if, if you're interested in volunteering, I, I really appreciate you giving me a shout out. So that's really all that I have. Um, we do, we are looking at the calendar for next year to set our general meeting dates. So if you are interested, feel free to come out. We hope to go back to in-person um, meetings next year, fingers crossed. Um, and if you'd like to become a member, my last point, um, there's a link right on the Lewiston Porter uh, website. If you just search for PTSA, you hit become a member. It's $5 for an entire year to be a member. Uh, you get some discounts associated with that, um, but we would really, really appreciate the support. It takes literally about a minute uh, to fill out the membership, and we hope to have membership tables throughout the year um, as we go, hopefully back to more in-person events next year. So uh, that's really all that I have. Thank you. Uh, thank you for listening, and if anybody has any comments, you can send them through the chat. Um, and like I said, my email and my mobile number is on the district website if you'd like to contact me at any time. So thank you again for having me. Thank you so much, Mrs. McAuliffe. I really appreciate your time and, and being here with us today. Uh, this is a, a special time for these families as they, uh, some of them are entering our district uh, for the first time. And I do see a question in the chat. It says, how do you sign up to volunteer? I know Mrs. McAuliffe went over how to sign up to be a PTSA member, but to be a volunteer at the Primary Education Center, there is an orientation training. It's about an hour long uh, required. Generally, uh, we'll do it about twice a year. And uh, we have a volunteer handbook, a little presentation, um, expectations of a volunteer, um, and, and different areas that you can help in in our building. Most parents want to help right in their child's classroom, but there are other special areas where we need extra hands. Uh, the library is one of them, for example. Uh, so this year, our vol parent volunteer program was on pause due to COVID. Um, so please look for information about that in the fall. We do send home uh, flyers. And again, I, I do most of my messaging now via Seesaw. There are principal announcements on Seesaw as well as your own classroom teacher. 
Uh, so as soon as you get that Seesaw information and that QR code, you wanna log in right away. Uh, so you don't miss anything. Our monthly calendars also are on Seesaw and that's uh, a calendar of everything that's happening that you need to know about in your school. And it also has attached to it an entire monthly newsletter where we feature all kinds of stories and, and, and happenings around our building that we are proud of. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't see any other questions in the chat. Um, I am going to move to uh, the welcome to kindergarten video. Uh, this video is again, that snapshot of the entire kindergarten year. And uh, I, I think it might uh, bring up some other questions for you. Uh, so at that, after the video is over, uh, we will, you will get to meet the rest of our staff that are here today. And then we will start to close up with uh, your questions. All right. So without further ado, here is Welcome to Kindergarten video. Welcome to Kindergarten at Lewis and Porter Central School District's Primary Education Center. supporting the social and emotional growth of our students. children is learning how to read. The PEC implements a rigorous reading program aligned with the Common Core Learning Standards for English Language Arts. At the PEC, we integrate literature, informational text, phonics, listening and speaking, and grammar skills into our literacy block, allowing for the opportunity to apply strategic reading skills in a meaningful way. We do this through all of these varied instructional methods. The children also love to practice their new reading skills and strategies with parent volunteers. Parent volunteers are an integral part of our program. Lots of information will be shared with you about how to share this special kindergarten experience as a parent volunteer in our school. Specific information about how volunteers are used by your child's teacher will be shared with you at Open House in September. Workshop provides children with the opportunity to read from self-selected readers. These books are written at each child's independent reading level and provide practice with fluency, decoding, and practice using learned reading strategies. writing. 
Most often, children begin kindergarten with the ability to write letters that represent words, along with drawing a picture that matches their message. But as the year progresses, writing develops into a connected message that can be read with correctly spelled sight words, detailed pictures, correct use of spacing, punctuation, and proper use of upper and lowercase letters. Our math program is aligned with the Common Core Learning Standards adopted by New York State and includes both whole group and small group learning tasks, along with technology integration and building foundational math skills. Sometimes our math looks like play in math centers. We use math gates, whole group graphing, or just explore with our manipulatives.
such a wonderful year. We are hopeful that your child's experience with us is full of fun and wonderment and that it creates memories that last a lifetime. We look forward to sharing the journey. Okay, um, uh, thank you for sticking with us. Um, I do have a few more people for you to meet that are important. Um, and I'd like to start with our nurse, uh, Mrs. Jackie Leggett. Are you still on? You are. Yes, I am. Here I am. <laughs> Great. Uh, school is in session, so you never know if, if Mrs. Leggett's going to be pulled away. But we did mm -hmm. want you to meet her today. And uh, I'm going to bring up one of her documents that she's going to talk about. But go ahead, Mrs. Leggett. Hi, everybody. I do see some familiar names. So you've been this route before. Um, uh, but of course, I do need a physical if they are new to the school. The pre-K students, the physical from last year is sufficient. Um, but uh, anybody new, I do need a physical from the doctor that can be 12 months prior to the first day of school. So uh, your child has had a physical in the last 12 months from September. Um, they can, uh, you can get that sent in to us. Um, Why don't you guys go in and have a seat in there? Okay. Just had some visitors, so I'll, I'll be quick. <laughs> uh, this, this document, this is the immunizations that are required for kindergarten. Um, check into it and make sure that your child is up to date. They do need um, their shots by the 14th day of school. Uh, otherwise, they would have to be excluded. Um, the, uh, the doctor's office is still up fast, so you know, call for an appointment. They can be given before they turn five if your child isn't turning five until after. Go, go sit down, please, buddy. Um, and uh, they, they can fax them right to our, our um, office. Uh, I'm also here, you know, of course, for injuries. And then also, if your child has any health concerns, any diagnoses, allergies, medications that they need to receive, uh, you know, give me a call. Uh, let me know so that we can uh, get a health care plan in place and uh, I can notify the teacher um, and uh, any, any problems that uh, we need to know about. Um, I think that covers the, the gist of it. I do have a couple of visitors that came in, so <laughs> I have to leave, but I'll check back with the chat. If anybody has any questions, put them in the chat and I, I will get back to you. Thank you, Mrs. Leggett. We appreciate your time. Um, so uh, I just want to reinforce the importance of getting this done early so that your child is starting day one with all these immunizations uh, in place. Um, we just do not wanna to get to a place where 14 days into the school year, we have to exclude a child. Uh, it's, it's because they're lacking one of the immunizations. We do have to follow New York state health laws. Um, if you have any further questions about this, please contact um, Mrs. Leggett at school and she can help guide you to exactly what your child needs. Um, and if you do have a health care plan uh, that needs to be put in place for your child due to allergies or anything that we need to know about, any meds that need to be distributed in school, please contact us this summer. Uh, now or through the summer so that we can create that health care plan and it is ready for day one. Our nurse will review it with the, your child's classroom teacher and all medication must be brought into school with a doctor's uh, script and by an adult. It cannot be carried by a child at any time at my level. Okay. At this time, I'm going to uh, turn over to our social worker, Mrs. Myers. 
Um, and uh, Mrs. Myers is full time here at the PEC. Uh, and I'm happy to announce that as part of our district strategic plan, starting next year, we will have a full-time social worker in every single building across our campus. Right now we have three and we will be increasing that to four. Uh, we are uh, a school district that believes the foundation of solid academic learning begins with social and emotional support. So uh, Mrs. Myers, thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Hi, everyone. So I just want to talk a little bit about what my role is here in the building and um, some of the opportunities that uh, your children or uh, curriculum, I guess, that they'll be exposed to uh, when they start with us in the fall. Um, <clears throat> I provide individual and group counseling to students that um, either have uh, an IEP through special education or um, any student that has a social emotional concern um, coming from you or their teacher that is impacting them while they are in school. And I do that either one-on-one uh, -on -one working on coping skills or emotion regulation, or in a small group, we work on social skills, peer relationships, um, and again, you know, those coping strategies. So, um, one of the best parts of my job is that I get to push into all of the classrooms throughout the school year. I do it in two chunks. So the first half of the year, we try to start with kindergarten and it usually lasts about 12 weeks. And I use a program called Second Step that has um, three components to it. The first being uh, feelings recognition in others. The second component is feelings recognition in ourselves and then the coping strategies to deal with those strong feelings. Then the last uh, section that we work on is problem solving. And it goes in that order because we teach the kids that for them to solve a problem, they have to first be calm. So uh, we do that, like I said, for about 12 weeks, we try to start with kindergarten. It gives me the opportunity to meet all of the students and for them to know me, recognize me as a helper in the building. So if they need anything, they know um, that I'm the person they can come to. And um, so they get that kindergarten, they'll get it in first grade and in second. And actually last year, uh, if you have a pre-K student, they are utilizing second step in our pre-K po program right now as well. So they're being exposed to it uh, pre-K through second grade. Um, I think that's it. Um, one of the biggest questions I get is about, um, you know, students having anxiety about coming to school and students that have difficulty separating from uh, mom and dad. Sometimes that first day can be a little bit difficult. So I would encourage you to reach out um, to myself or even Mrs. Larson if you have a concern about that. We can try to work uh, over the summer to come up with a plan to make sure that that transition is smooth uh, in the fall. So if anybody has any questions, you can email me, call me. I am here in the summer um, for about two weeks spread out throughout the summer, um, but you can reach me at any time. Thank you, Mrs. Myers. I, I don't see any questions in the chat right now for you. Um, but I want to uh, thank you for being here, Mrs. Myers. That second step program is really an important building block for uh, children to learn all those uh, strategies for problem solving. And it really, it builds upon each other every year. Those skills are, are scaffold, scaffolded so that they build and they also learn a common vocabulary. Uh, so that along with the leader and me approach that I mentioned earlier are the programs that we use for character development. Uh, okay, I am going to turn now to this usually answers most uh, a, a really important question for parents and that is transportation. You know, um, how are we getting your child to school? What is our process for parents picking up children? All of that we are gonna go over now. I have uh, Mrs. Beth Bach and Mrs. Carrie uh, Wittenzelner here who work together on that currently in our main office. And they are gonna talk to you about a very special tool we use called Pickup Patrol. Thank you, Mrs. Larson. 
<clears throat> I am Beth Bach. I work in the main office of the PEC. And first thing I'm going to talk about is buses. Late in the summer, you will be getting a bus assignment for your child that will tell you the pickup time and the bus route and the bus stop, which is more often than not at your house, unless you choose to provide transportation for your child to and from school every day. Um, if you do need changes to your bus stop for child care reasons, um, you have to use uh, our form that's on the website that Mrs. Larson showed earlier. It's called an alternate pickup drop off application. Um, that application is reviewed by the bus company that we use, Ridge Road Express, and um, they will determine whether or not they have room for your child on those buses and um, either approve or um, they do their best to make arrangements um, that satisfies you. So um, the sooner, the better that you can um, apply for that change um, that makes easier for planning. Next, I'll talk a little bit about pickups. Um, we have something called, I call it the pickup form, um, the student, the permanent student pickup form, which Mrs. Larson is showing you now. It's uh, pink. It's not on your screen pink, but it's pink. And that allows you to tell us if there are certain days of the week that you will always be picking up your child. So that becomes their, what we call the default plan. So your child may ride the bus Monday through Thursday, but every Friday you're choosing to pick your child up. Um, it also has on the bottom of that form um, an optional um, choice to um, let us know of other persons that you are authorizing for the school year to pick up your children. That goes on our file and we also will then um, make you a, a sign that looks like this for your car. It has your students name on it and it lists all of the people that can pick up your child and when you come staff is out there you would hold this up in the window or whoever's picking up your child show their id we match that and then they can release um, the child to you um, finally i'm going to talk about pickup patrol which um, is for me i'm as excited about pickup patrol as mrs allender is about seesaw um, Pickup Patrol is an app that goes on your phone. Um, we do need a form from you because you cannot get this app on the, uh, at the App Store. But there will be a mailing coming out uh, later this summer with all of these forms and all of this information. I'm just going over everything quickly right now. The form looks like this and you would submit that to us with your email. We have um, some processing that we have to do here in the main office. But after you submit that to us, you can be on the lookout for a welcome to pick up patrol email and that um, email will walk you through the steps of setting it up, putting the app on your phone. Um, you'll get a password. It's very secure. Um, and we use that pick up patrol um, to to see if perhaps your child rides the bus Monday through Friday. But this Thursday, you're going to need to pick your child up either early or at regular dismissal time. You let us know that through the app. Um, the app does lock up at 11 o'clock so that we can process it because all of that information is going to your um, child's teacher, to the main office, and also to the dismissal staff. So uh, we use the app as well for um, reporting your child absent, reporting your child um, maybe a late arrival, or again, if you need to take your child out early that day. Um, I think that covers everything. I know I was pretty quick. And again, we're here all summer. If you have any questions, please feel free to call us. Um, Mrs. Wittenzellner uh, is waving. She is also going to be um, helping with this as well. Actually, all of our staff is very versed in using Pickup Patrol and all of our um, uh, dismissal procedures and arrival procedures. So, um, Mrs. Larson, did I forget anything? I think you covered it all very thoroughly, Mrs. Bach. And I just wanted to. Uh, 
introduce as Beth did and um, Mrs. Wittenzellner because she is new to the PEC. Uh, she's just completed three months uh, as of yesterday and um, she will be a helpful, friendly face to all in the office next year. So uh, there she is. <laughs> Thank you for being here. All right. Well, you have Matt. Hey, Mrs. Larson. Yes. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't know where we are in the agenda, but I do notice there's some questions in the chat that I think are important and might we might want to address. Okay. One was, um, are the teachers and staff all COVID vaccinated? Yes. I did send out a response to that. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't that's see your okay. Response. And the, the answer is, um, you know what? Uh, I didn't see it because it only went to a person who sent it. So, I see. Okay. Uh, Pardon I, me. I apologize for that. Um, it did not go to everyone, but the answer is vaccinations are not required for staff at this time. Okay. We did give release time for staff who uh, chose to be vaccinated uh, as, as the vaccinations were out, but they are not required for school district employees at this time. Okay. Uh, the other question is the other one is direct. I don't, I'm not sure because I've never done it this way. As yeah, the there was another one that was uh, privately to directed to me and Mrs. Allender, and I did answer that also. Oh, you did as well. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay great. Yes. Um, are there? You're welcome to come off mic at this time or put more questions in the chat. And I have one more answer to, I don't, pardon me, uh, forgive me, I don't know who asked me the question, but about um, the Lucy Calkins and the math modules, but I did go ahead and look while we were on, and you can find more information on the, un, um, on the Lucy Calkins if you go to units of, units with an S of study.com. Darcy, do you want to put that in the chat for people to everyone? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I've never really chatted, but I will do that. I can figure that out. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, okay, I got it. I'm doing it right now. Got it. All right. Oh, yeah, I, got have, it. Okay. I have brought up for you the kindergarten supply list. This is a general supply list that we use this year. Um, it may be slightly updated on our website in the next few weeks. Um, we did have some new things on there based on uh, some of our COVID regulations. For example, what's in green here is that uh, we still, this year, are still uh, wearing masks, whether we're vaccinated or not. Everyone in the school district is required to wear masks when they are around others. Um, and so that still holds true. We will uh, continue to follow all New York State Department of Health and uh, New York State Education Department uh, COVID guidelines. But as you know, things have been changing and that's why it's important for you to uh, check in on our handbook. We try to update it as quickly as possible. Uh, also, uh, our school district superintendent, Mr. Kasseri, um, he, he really throughout this entire pandemic has been providing weekly family communication. Um, so uh, communication here um, is, is always coming whether it's from Seesaw, from your teacher, directly from me on Seesaw, or from our superintendent. He does send out uh, what we call robocalls that go right to your phone, but he also sends out uh, direct emails on a very regular basis. This year, it's been every week um, so that families are updated. Um, it is very important uh, that we have an updated email address for you. Uh, because we do send out mass emails and information in that manner. Um, so if you're not sure if you, when you registered, if you put an email down, I would encourage you to do so. Um, that is extremely important that we have that contact information. So there are just some supplies. Um, you can again find this on the website. We will also be sending this home to you, but I know some people like to shop early. Uh, so we will send this home to you as soon as uh, we can. Um, with that, I want to say that you have now completed step one on the kindergarten transition journey. And uh, it's an important step because, you know, for some of you, your child's going to a new place. 
If your child is already in our UPK program, uh, they are certainly much more acclimated, but some of them are only there for half a day. So it is still a transition for them to acclimate to full day kindergarten. Um, and we wanted to make sure that you knew uh, you had faces to some of the staff members you may talk to on the phone. Um, and uh, your child quickly learns that they have safe people here at school taking care of them. But that's important for parents too. Um, so that was really our number one goal of today's orientation is to help you feel comfortable and safe as we begin this journey together. It is truly a partnership. Uh, that's not a cliche. It is truly, truly a partnership, especially in the beginning of this journey um, as we transition our children. Uh, we cannot wait to meet you in person. So that's what I wanna talk about next. Um, next week on June 8th or June 10th, uh, if you are a family that is not in our UPK program, if you are new to the district and coming into the primary education center for the first time as a kindergarten family, you should have an appointment scheduled for a screening next week on June 8th or June 10th. Those screening appointments uh, were going out yesterday via the email that got you here today. Uh, if you're unsure of your appointment time, please call Mrs. Bach or Mrs. Whitson-Zellner in our main office and we will, we will go over your time with you. The kindergarten screening, I'll have Mrs. Allender just talk about for a minute. She will be there for uh, at least one of the sessions and uh, she will talk to you a little bit about what you can expect. And it is not directly in our school building. It is next door where we have more space. Uh, it's in our district board of education room. Okay, so your um, appointment should probably last approximately 30 minutes. Um, I would block out if you're going to take time off of work, you might want to, you know, up, err on the side of caution and go 45, but it would typically runs very, very smoothly. <clears throat> um, what your child is going to do on that day is they're going to be visiting uh, four different people stations per se. Um, you're going to see an occupational therapist, a, the nurse, um, and at that time, if you've got anything to bring in to Mrs. Leggett, then our nurse, um, that, that's fine. You can bring it in, then some people do. Um, they're going to see a speech therapist, and they're going to see one of the kindergarten teachers. So um, if there was anything, the kindergarten teachers are just doing a very quick, quick, quick um, screening with a universal screening tool called the Brigance. Um, and uh, the speech therapists and the occupational therapists and the physical therapists will be just doing a very quick screen as well. And if there was any um, areas of concern at all, um, any of us would certainly um, talk to you about it that day and just kind of try to get you in this summer and or early fall to just do a further evaluation to see if we can help. Um, because early intervention is clearly um, a very, a very vital, uh, important part of kindergarten as a whole. But um, some kids just, you know, don't have that grip down or just um, just need a little bit of um, speech language, um, maybe just an academic intervention service for them for, in terms of speech. Um, if there was anything academic, um, we would certainly let you know some things you could work on. Um, but uh, it's just uh, more than that. It's just kind of a way for you to get uh, your face in front of some of the people who will be seeing your children, um, potentially some of the special area uh, people that would see them as well. If you have any questions or concerns, it's a really good time to just bring those up very quickly. Um, if there's anything we can help you with, we certainly um, would love to do that for you. So it's just a quick, quick thing. I mean, if your child um, feels really uncomfortable with that or has a little problem with separation, you're willing, we always said, you know, allow you to come with your child up to the table and you can kind of go around to the stations with them as well. We certainly don't want this to be a time of anxiety. It's just a just quick, quick, quick screen. 
and we use some, some of the um, academic intervention, or excuse me, inter academic information uh, to balance our classes. So if you're, I, I did want to mention, uh, in addition to the children who are attending our pre-K program, any children with IPs, um, you don't have to go to that screening um, to see the academic portion or, or the service providers unless you choose to. Um, again, we're just kind of using the, the you would know that information probably already about your child. So it, it's up to you if your child has an IP as to whether or not you attend screening. It's not a must do. But the other kids are just, you know, it's a great way to say hi to come with some of the kindergarten teachers, the nurse, because they all love to fly there eventually. And, uh, you know, just ask any questions, calm any nerves, address any concerns. So that will be next week on June 8th and 10th. Um, Correct. Uh, please uh, check your emails and make sure you have your appointment time. Um, Mrs. Larson? Yes. I just want to clarify that the appointments went out via regular mail because they were all individualized and customized. Um, they were individual times. But if anyone wants to either email us or give us Thank a call. Thank you. We're very happy. We're, we all have that information, so we can give that out. But it, everything was, e or I'm sorry, mailed home. Okay, thank you for that clarification, Mrs. Bach. Yeah. Um, so this was step one today, the orientation. Step two is next week for your screening. If you are in the UPK program, if your child is in our UPK program here at Lewiston Porter in partnership with the YMCA, you will not be getting a screening appointment from us. They will be screened right in their UPK classroom uh, while they are on campus here. Okay. Right. I just answered that. Mrs. Young right. asked about that. Oh, yes. good. If I didn't even know someone asked. Attending, to, attending our current UPK program on campus at Luport, they are not going to be screened um, from um, on the, one of those two dates. Their teachers are going to gather the information for us. You, you will not get a screening appointment if you attend our UPK YMCA program at Luport. Okay. Um, then there's one final step before they actually begin their first day of kindergarten. And that final step is very unique to Lewiston Porter. Um, most school districts in the area uh, have kind of a group orientation where the kids drop off all their supplies, maybe meet some other kids, and, um, and it's in a group setting. Um, we actually have individualized personal appointments with your child, um, and they're at least one parent or guardian. Um, but you can bring uh, both parents if they're available. You will be invited to what we call a meet and greet appointment with your kindergarten teacher. Uh, that appointment will take place the Tuesday and the Wednesday right after Labor Day in September. So when the rest of the district, uh, first grade through, um, uh, through 12th grade are coming to school on the bus, um, to start their new school year, you are starting your school year in a more personalized manner at a 20 to 30 minute appointment with your new kindergarten teacher. Uh, that information will be sent home to you. Uh, you will generally have that, uh, but the latest by the second week of August, uh, we do send kindergarten placements home before any other placements in the district so that you have time to make arrangements to be at your appointment. So with that being said, uh, your first day for kindergarten will actually be the Thursday after Labor Day, uh, where they're actually in school all day uh, with their classmates. Any questions about that step on the journey or anything else before we start to close our orientation today? I don't see anything more in the chat. Oh, I think a new message might be coming in. Okay, nope, nothing. And please do feel free to come up, Mike. We're a small enough group where we can, we can chat out loud too. 
Um, do you, uh, the question I'm getting is, uh, do you do the Pledge of Allegiance? Uh, yes, every morning, you may have seen in the video, we kind of have a morning news media room. It's actually run by our students. We have a student news crew, uh, generally second and third graders will be on that and we uh, empower them to lead the show. And uh, they help lead the Pledge of Allegiance uh, with me um, every day. We start the day together as a school community. Um, so we're in a newsroom and then that news program is broadcasted uh, on our smart boards, which are in our classrooms. Um, so everybody tunes in, there's an announcement, everybody gets their smart boards on and we start to the day together as a school community. We start with the pledge, we do a weather report, we celebrate our student leaders um, and we have all kinds of important announcements. Um, so that is the way we start together daily. Anything else? I am, I am free to stay on um, for about another 15 minutes. If anyone has personalized uh, questions that they want to talk to me about or Mrs. Allender, um, but at this time, if, if you do not have any other questions, uh, we look forward to meeting some of you next week. And uh, the rest of you we will see uh, right after Labor Day for your appointments. Please remember, we have people here to help you all summer. And we will be mailing home quite a bit of information. Um, the uh, first, uh, the packet that you will receive with your teacher's name, again, is going to be that second week of August. Uh, prior to that, remember transportation information will come out first before you get your teacher's name, and we want to get that back as quickly as possible. I want to thank you all for being here with us today, and uh, we look forward to meeting each and every one of you. Um, have a terrific day. Stay safe this summer. Uh, we'll see you all soon. Bye for now. I see that two families are still on with Mrs. Allender and I, and I do know that one has indicated that they'd like uh, to uh, chat in private. Um, is there, um, uh, Mrs. Wright? Okay, I, think I will go okay. to honor that. Okay, is that okay. something, before you go, Mrs. Allender, yeah. um, if I could just ask that family, is that something uh, that is there a question that you would like Mrs. Allender on for or just uh, the principal? And you can come off mic if you'd like. I believe it's a Bill and a Rachel. Okay. All right, Mrs. Allender, uh, we'll okay. talk later. Thank you for being sure. here. All, All right. right. And wait, Tamara, will you not close out? Because there is a question here that says direct message. And I'm not sure you got that. And I want to answer this person's um, concern. I don't uh, know how to. Do you, do you see everything? I do, I do see it. Um, and it's and, Shannon Young. And, and I do think that. Oh, that one. No. What is, uh, read the question, Mrs. Allender. Um, I couldn't get the whole thing. It says, my husband and I want to know if the whole critical, and then it kind of cuts off, something theory is being taught or any race-based teaching. Yes, I did answer that, did answer that? Okay. directly. Okay, great. Uh, and the answer okay. is no, not at this time. We use sure. uh, 
We okay. use the Year and Me program for character development. Sounds great. Okay. Thank you, though. Thank you. I think All right. Um, okay. Bye-bye. I'll see you soon. Bye.